Tickled pink, think green. The purple pen of progress, marking, 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 live marking, live assessment. There's so many different ways. Um, then we apply a frequency and then we start to have a bit of a problem. All schools want consistency, but not one has ever told me that they've achieved it. It's desirable, but I think we're looking at the wrong thing. How many different types of feedback do you know? How many different types are in your school policy? And what influences also impact on the quality of feedback that you provide? I wonder how many of these influences are attributed in your school policy. So I've been doing a lot of work on teaching and learning policies for a number of years now and trying to support schools to move their policies into the next decade. Um, here are some of the things I've been reading and researching. Mm -hmm. Firstly, um, we've got the written feedback, the verbal feedback, uh, a study I published with Mark Quinn at University College London in September 2019. I'm pleased to see that is making a bit of an impact. Then there's the non-verbal signals. How often do we mention these in our policies? How often do we put the non-verbal signals on our database on SIMS as evidence that we provide students with feedback? Uh, so these have been around for, since day one, uh, decades, decades ago. Then we have feedback, feed up and feed forward. And something that I was inspired by, by a new piece of research published by John Hattie in 2020. If we just look at feedback, first of all, it's the default mode for all of us when we compare a student's piece of work, the new piece of work to where they were before, feed back on this and see how they've made some progress. Then we've got feed up, which is comparing the actual status of a new piece of work to their target grade, no matter how far away the target grade is. Then we have feed forward when we explain the target status of the piece of work to the actual status. So we might want to move up in increments, for example. So there's already six formats. So taking this a little bit further, we've got written feedback, which is your tickle pink, think green, your purple pen of progress, or the marking default that exam boards and everyone else seems to stipulate as the champion of all feedback. Then we have written feed up. So another version of providing written feedback and then the written feed forward. So there's three types of written assessment right there. Verbal feedback. So I might want to just speak to you live assessment in the classroom, compare the actual status of your work to where you were before, the previous status. The verbal feed up. So as I've already explained, um, where you compare the actual status to the target and then the verbal feed forward. And where I'm thinking at about now is taking these six a little bit further. The non-verbal feedback the non-verbal feed up, and then the non-verbal feed forward. And how these might appear in the classroom, I'm still working on some examples, but one might be where I give a non-verbal signal and I point at your piece of work, thumbs up, I give you the glare and I kind of move over to that other piece and say, well, that one wasn't too good, but I obviously don't say all those things, it's just the kind of non-verbal signals. So how much of this is in your feedback policy uh, I'm dubious. There, there, there's lots of things we can do if we want to trump the notion that marking is the only way. If we want to support the teaching profession and if we want to move the dialogue forward for all of us as professionals as well as for our parents. So there's something to think about. The Power of Feedback inspired by Robert Coe. This research published 2006, a great study by Robert Coe. Um, I might be the champion of marking in your school but the characteristic of the task determines how, how well my written feedback is received by the child. And then we throw into the mix, they're four years old, they're 16 years old, it's the first time they're looking at a written piece of feedback on a particular topic. Already there's a, a thousand different parameters determining the success of my written feedback. Um, and then if a school then says, you do it once a week, the yellow box or whatever the methodology might be, we open up a big can of worms. So there are lots in here, how feedback's presented, goal setting, ego, competition, so there might be a prize uh, associated with receiving the feedback, responding to the feedback, um, how students self-evaluate, so that self and peer assessment, it has to be taught. Uh, until it's taught, it's not gonna be successful, so we have to spend a lot of time doing this. But, you know, positive or negative, for example, um, there's also the timing, I either give you feedback now, or I wait a week or till next lesson, and then I provide the student with feed up, feed forward, feedback, 
written, verbal. There's so many ways of doing different things rather than mark once a week, use the purple pen of progress. Um, so there's lots here. And now there's lots of links in the video. Please take a moment to read through some of the feedback policies that I'm looking at, some of the support I'm giving leaders and head teachers behind the scenes to think about these 16 influences as well as the nine different types of assessment that we can provide to our students in our feedback policies. And one starting point would be to ban the word marking and move the profession forwards into the next decade. I hope it helps.